You know, in, in, in Corinthians 9, 32, Apostle Paul said something like, To the poor I have become poor, to the weak I have become weak. I have become all things to all men, so that by all means I might save some. Uh, as Apostle Paul. But the Apostle Paul wrote to the gentleman, sa dulo, sabi niya, ang greatest fear niya is that if he doesn't live his life in a biblical, consistent way, that after he preaches the gospel, that inconsistent yung life niya, he would be disqualified by the very same gospel he preaches. And that's the problem with Christians and churches today. We preach the gospel, but the way we live, and the way we speak, and the way we do church disqualifies us. From the gospel itself. Pastor, are you talking about that the church should be acceptable to everyone? Actually, no. The Bible wasn't written to be acceptable. The church was not created by Jesus to be acceptable and politically correct. It also doesn't mean we wage war on everything every day. There are some churches today where anything and everything is okay. As long as ka in church, whatever you do outside the church is your business. That's actually not right, not true. And then there are churches. Oh my goodness. There are churches who preach that only Baptist people go to heaven. That's going to be a pretty small reunion because heaven is a big place. There are churches who discuss and base their Christianity on the Bible version that you use. We're in trouble, but when I said Jesus didn't preach from the King James or the NIV or anything. There are churches where they care more about what we wear. But pastor, can I wear bikini in IBC? Yes, you can. But don't get mad. If you catch a cold, it's air conditioned. Don't get mad at people who look at you like such swimming. You know what I'm saying? We have to understand that God created the church and He customized. I like that word. I like that word. I was telling my class. I, I'm one of those kids when I was when I was you know early on you know growing up. I was one of those kids. The Baxidabi teacher stay inside the line. I draw outside. Bad, no, bad. That's why the guy does comes. I'm one of those students when they say color everything in red, green, and blue. I will color everything orange and yellow and violet. I was one of those kids. We, we have to I like that's why I like the word customized. Well, maybe some of the customized will get there later on. But God created the church, He customized the church in order to reach people for Christ. One of the greatest, um, in my view, shames, but I understand the way of David Pine. We work, we work with the tribes, we do a lot of tribal ministries. In fact, Pray for my wife and her team. They're going to the tribes, uh, the Batak tribes of Palawan next month without me. So it's driving me crazy, okay? I'm just telling you that right now. And she's satisfied to get up and eat some So, but she does that on occasion. But this time she's going all the way to her best friend, the Dr. Winky, and they're doing a uh, ministry, an immersion with the Batak tribes in Palawan uh, for about a week, you know? Which means I will go crazy in two ways. One, because I'm at home, managing by myself. And then second, my wife is halfway across the country, you know, running up and down the mountains in the jungles of Palau. Okay, so that I have to give her a crash course on outdoor living. You know. and it's, it, but she, she's doing that. We do a lot of ministry work outside the tribes. Uh, one of the things that bothers me about doing tribal work is when, when people make you dress a certain way in order to be acceptable in church. Kailangan mag-bees ka kasi Christian ka rin. Hindi ka na pwedeng nakabahat o walang damit. Kasi after the response, the people who don't have those in the tribe, they don't have a problem with that. You do. 
So if you tell them we have to dress this way in order to be acceptable, that's like that Jesus telling you, Kailangan mo ayos ka muna ng damit before I can save you. Fix your clothes. You see, we have to understand that God created the church and church by design. Let's look at, let's look at what I mean, okay? Today's foundation of this new series we're going into up to next month in our anniversary month, okay? And so, so this is about three, three to four message series um, going into our anniversary. So this is foundational to that. Let's understand. What I mean is that we customize the church by design. I don't know if, if you were able to see the video that we did on Facebook. If you see that, kindly share that because it's reaching a lot of people, you know, um, amazingly reaching a lot of people. There's a short video that we shared on Facebook. So if you find that, find the church, and then you share the video there. But the not the artist is the most important it should have been the one doing the video, but I don't want to be that. Si Pastor Paul was so cute. No? So, I need to be a good guy. He's 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 a Pastor Cruz. Because he's a good guy. 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 So, let's just understand what we mean by church by the Let's look at scripture. The scripture in Matthew chapter uh, 16, verse 13 to 19. It says, when Jesus came to a region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? He's talking to Peter. Well, they replied, some say it's John the Baptist, some Elijah, others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Now, this is really important because you need to understand the characters that was being spoken of here. First, they said it must be John the Baptist, and John the Baptist was the greatest preacher before Jesus' time. He was announced as, but already martyred by his time. So they thought, Siguro you're John the Baptist reincarnate. Or maybe you're Elijah. Elijah is the most famous prophet, you know, from the Old Testament. So they thought, maybe you're Elijah. And then maybe you're Jeremiah, because Jeremiah was the one who preached and campaigned for the early, uh, for, for old captain, you know, my slaves when they became slaves. See, Jeremiah was the prophet during the time of slavery. So they thought, Siguro, it must be Jeremiah, the three greatest people of that time. But then he asked me, but who do you say, Peter? Who do you say I am? No? Maraming sila sabi lang ng tao, Peter, but sa'yo, sino ako? Who do you say that? And Peter said this. You know, Simon Peter said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Messiah Christos. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In verse 17, Jesus replied, you are blessed. Simon said to John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say unto you, Peter, which means pebble or small rock. Please take note of that before that did my man. And upon this rock, I will build my, and then you have the first mention of the word church. I will build my church, ecclesia. Ecclesia. I will build my church, and all the powers of hell cannot conquer it. And all the powers of hell cannot conquer it. Important thing is talk about the church. Because he's already talking about the church here. What did the church mean further on in 1 Corinthians chapter 3? According to Apostle Paul, he said, For no one can lay any other foundation than the one we already have. Jesus Christ. Back up. Notice what it said. And upon this and down rock, I will build my church. So who's the foundation? And the and Apostle Paul said, no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have. And see you know, Christ Jesus. Let's understand the word customize. Customize in the traditional meaning means to build, to fit, to alter according to individual specifications and design with the goal of accomplishing a specific task. Pag sinabi mong customize, ito yung sadyaan mong hinubok at ipinorma para magawa isang bagay. 
It means you take something that exists and you turn it into something more functional para maging effective dun sa lugar na yun. Okay? The problem in churches today, in worship today, in most anything today, is people just copy whatever's popular. Lalo Filipino culture. The Filipino culture is called an iconoclastic culture. You know what is an iconoclastic culture? Filipinos are in love. Boo God over icons. That's why we are the only country who have more movie stars becoming senators and presidents. Because they're icons. If a movie star says it, it must be right. We are a country with more chanke. You know what is a chanke? They are stores that sell fake goods than any other country, maybe in the world. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. What does that mean, Pastor? We know I would rather wear something fake with a brand, a bus with a B. Nike, N-Y-K-E. Tanner with a K. I'm not believing I would rather wear something fake with a brand than local without a brand. I, I'm guilty of that. I've done that before. You know, but if you're this size, do not play with fake shoes. I played the basketball tournament with fake shoes. All of you know that. The referee stopped and called for timeout. I said, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor! Timeout. Nobody called the timeout. But then, part of your shoe is on the other side of the court. I'm going to get you to sweat us. Sa kapila, you know, so balik ako gano'n. Pagbalik sa kapila, basta ka tayo ako din. The other part of the shoe is on the other side. Aba, nakakalta ko na sa patos. You know, Filipinos, man. Eh? We love icons. We're iconoclastic. In fact, our religions are icons. Pastor, you talk about the Catholic religion, no? I'm talking about just evangelical, Christian, Bible, religion. People worship pastors. They're former members of this church. Di ba katanda? Pero hala saan, patay na, ano? O wala na? So baka bilang simbahan na, amen? There are other members of the church. I remember a long time ago, before I became the pastor of the church, they would call on Saturday night. Poor Atelus, answering the calls all night. Sino po speaker tomorrow? They would ask if my father, the saint, the doctor, the community, they would be speaking tomorrow. If they say, ay, sa evening po, ah, okay, I'll attend the evening. You know? So when I became the pastor, all the speaker things on the program is just me. But sometimes it's not me. I just tell them, oh, just put it there, because they don't matter. Or just don't put anything in there. We worship icons. Tama? One artista, you know, bold star appearing naked without clothes on the movie. The next day she says, I've been born again. And everybody goes, oh, she's born again. Amen. Amen. Life change, right? That was just yesterday. Yesterday I killed all of my family with an attack. And today I'm born again. Amen. Amen. Uh, this morning I was a drug dealer. This afternoon I'm now a Christian. Amen. Amen. Right? We love icons. Huh? But the person who just came to know the Lord as Savior because he needed Jesus? Huh? Not a bad guy, a good guy, pays his taxes, registers his tax slogan in the market, does everything, gets saved. Oh, I'm glad you saved him. Okay, next guy. Where's the gold star? Let's, let's look at that one. Okay. And so now even the churches sometimes when they sing, you know, in the worship, I'm confused. Is it worship or American Idol? Or Pinoy Black Talent? I'm okay with lights. I get that. Okay? I was only with all the stuff, so don't get me wrong. But sometimes it's more, sometimes I will call our own worship team. And I will call the third party worship team. You know, you know I'm right. And I will say, okay, wait. There's too much show much in there. Para hindi tama yan. Do it right. You know? 
right? That's not customized. That's different. We have to understand that when God designed the church, He built it in order to specifically church to accomplish a certain task. Which means that if you are a child of God, which means that if you are a Christian, then you are a part of God's customization of IBC. You may think you don't have talent. You may think you don't have abilities. You see, people will have a way to contribute. But God allowed you to be a part of this body of Christ, this church, because you are part of God's customization. Pinostomize ka ni Lord para maging nagamit-gamit sa lugar na ito. So kung gagawin mo, paupo-upo ka lang, you're making a big mistake and you're being unfaithful to your customization. Because if I, if I understand correctly, customization, everything has a specific purpose and design to accomplish a specific task. So I ask you again this morning, why are you here? And that's an important thing. Back in Pastor, let's have a look at a few more verses to understand, okay? When we speak of customization, again, we read this from Apostle, from, from Jesus, be written by Beth back in the Matthew Gospel, it says, I say to you something of what? That you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Upon this rock I will build my church, which means certain things for definitions. There are three words that are important in this series. One, the word Peter. The word Peter, something for you are Peter. The Greek word there is Petros, which means small rock. You are Peter. Okay? And then there's this word, for you are Peter, and upon this rock, the two words are being mentioned, rock and rock, because of the limited English language, no? in the translations. But in the second mention of the rock in verse 18, it says, Petra, boulder, large rock, used for foundations of buildings in Judean architecture. Upon this rock, I will build my church. If you go to Israel, there's an important place there called the Masada. The Masada is a great fortress that was built long, long, long ago, built on a mountain. It means that it is a unit of That's how the Judeans built rocks. No? You remember Jesus' is teaching? For whoever listens to me is like a man who builds his house on the rock and the rains come and the floods rise and he will stand still and he contrasts and the one the other one who doesn't do my words is like a man who builds his house on the sand and when the rains come what there will be great ruin so important again because in the old days they build things on rocks they don't really dig foundations they look for the nearest rock this church many years ago, uh, Tapay Apollo said, Pag nagkalindol sa Manila at magkalo yung I will go to IBC, I thought he was saying because he likes IBC. Come to find out later, IBC, this church, is built on a rock. Did you know that? The foundations of this church were built on adobe. Not Photoshop, huh? real adobe. So that's why this church has endured two earthquakes, or three, I think, major earthquakes, and we're fine. Because it's built on a rock. So the two rocks that we never get Peter is Peter and that cross, and then church, Ecclesia, the house of God, a group of believers gathered to accomplish the purposes in the world. Remember what I said about customers? And the same, the purpose of customization? To accomplish a specific task. So, pag sinabi pa lang church or ecclesia, it is a group of believers gathered to accomplish God's purposes in the world. Some of you may be thinking, wala mo pa di contribute sa church na to, or the body of Christ worldwide. That's so wrong. Because God saved you not only to take you to heaven, but to use you 
para kami hindi kalang Panginoon sa lugar na ito. Okay? I don't often give props to people. But this kid here, in the Sienna level, I love this kid. He's just not allowed to sing, but I love this kid. Bawat sa pumunta ng malakas, nakadiscourage. I love this kid. Why? All of you are sleeping, he's sweeping the first. Without anyone telling you. The other day, I almost killed him. Kasi I was on the way to the third floor. No? Patay lahat ang ilaw. Ha? Do not scare me when everything is dark, okay? You will be very, very hurt. Okay? Out of the darkness! With a broom! Very well, come on. Bad idea. Hindi lang niya alam how close he came to see Jesus on that night. I love this kid. He does his purpose. He thinks his job, he, he doesn't work here. He's just one of our kids here. And he sweeps and cleans without anyone telling him. I appreciate it. But the Lutos, is that his purpose in the church? I don't know. But in so far as I know, he encourages me. So he's serving a bigger purpose already. Just by sweeping. Some of you think you have to give gazillions of money in the first group. Praise God for the first last week. In order for me to be happy. I have nothing to do with it. It's just you serving your purpose in Christ. There are many people in this church that hindi nila hindi sa harapan who serve an incredible purpose in this church. We have many members who are old and, and, and they're, they can't go to church. I remember si Nani Ryan for many years, years, can no longer come to church. But I remember nung malakas mo si Nani, she would walk slowly, it takes forever, kasi bagal ni Nani, mahina na. But I would literally wait here, kasi I know she's coming. If I leave, kawawa naman. Buta siya, huwag naman sa ibang. Just, hahalik na ako niyan. Makikisa kayo ni Pastor, pinag-pray kita. I'm done. My time is done. Please don't do that after the church. Okay? okay unless, unless close tayo. Okay? There are only a few licensed people who can do that. Okay? If you are a little bit older than me or younger than my wife, you're not allowed. Fist bump is good. Okay? Only the mommies and the widows and the uh, yeah, that's allowed. Okay? If you are male, that's what Pastor Paul is Live your purpose. Pastor, this church is about purpose. No, it's understanding that God customized everyone to serve in the body of Christ. Hindi tayo pinuriate para mapaupo-upo lang dito. I remember many years ago, Josh Loza, because he's our second generation, when, when I was a youth pastor, I had so many bands in this church. Dang banda. The answer was the question, I think we had like five bands. We had all those bands, all boys band. One, one, one. You know, then you have the Josh. They're called the All You Can Eat Band. Because that's all they did. You know, all you can eat talaga sila. The buffet band. And then, and then, so why do we have so many bands? So said, don't worry about it. God's going to use that. And now, many of those bands are all over the Philippines. Some of those bands are mastering. God's using that. You see, God forbid that we broke and broke and broke to so many people and all of you sit down. That's not a part of your customization. You see, understand, you know, further on what we mean, okay? So, some first, let me define again, let me see it. So, if I am delayed, this is Apostle Paul. Now, he's, he's writing to Timothy, his son. He's supposed to visit Timothy to minister to them. But Paul knew being in jail, being in jail. That there's a great likelihood that Paul would not meet, meet the meeting. And this is what it says. If I am delayed, you know how people must conduct themselves in the house of God, 
This is the church of the living God, in which, the, which is the pillar and foundation of truth. Which means what, well, Pastor? God didn't create this church and build this church so you guys could just sit down and say, I'm waiting for the pastor to tell me something good today. Because you know what God wants you to do. Understand further what we mean. It says this again, Apostle Paul writing, So now you are, you are, you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together, we are His house. The house there is the same ecclesia, house of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. The cornerstone is Christ Jesus Himself. We are carefully joined together with Him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through Him, you Gentiles are also being made as a part of this dwelling where God lives by His Spirit. What does that mean then, Pastor? You verses they are, I don't see the Sabbath of God, Pastor, when we talk about, when we talk about those things. Huh? Talk about the church. Again, it says, you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. But you are, what? Being made to be a part of this dwelling where God lives in the spirit. He means a being, when you come to know Jesus Christ as Savior, what are the, what are the Gentiles and Jews? All are children of God. So yung katabi mo, baka maraming pera. At ikaw, wala ka pera pera. And you're all the same. Yung katabi mo, napakagalit mo mo tayo worship, you said, wow. Sana meron akong voice na ganyan, right? Tapos yung katabi mo na maganda voice na rin ka kumata sa akin ng gahan. Huwag mong gawin ganyan ang voice sa akin. It goes both ways. But there's a purpose, you see. Understanding further, it says here, again, back to the thing, in the gates of hell, what? Will that prevail against it? What does that mean, Pastor? Let's understand furthermore, okay? Let's look at what it means for Peter. The word Peter was not the rock that the church was built on by Jesus, is what was he said. You upon this rock was not Peter, okay? There are many religions that believe that Peter was the rock, so he became eventually the first pope of the church. Okay? I'm sorry, but I'm showing that to you from the Greek, that's the original language of the Bible, the New Testament. The rock was not the church that was built on by Jesus. Okay? If you want to go apologetic here, because if you have lahat ng ginawa ni Peter, is the authority in Acts chapter 15, Peter was wrong and James was the one the church followed. So you know this is already not Peter. So pag sinabi ni Peter upon this rock, hindi yung si Peter yung pinag-build that church. But it was what he said when he said, you are the Christ. Christos, the Messiah, the one prophesied from the Old Testament, the Savior, the fulfillment of prophecy. You are the rock. It wasn't Peter. The second thing we need to understand is about Jesus in the statement. Because if we say Jesus, it meant that Jesus was the one prophesied from the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 53. Okay? Micah chapter 2. To say, to say a few. He was the Savior of mankind. The fulfillment of prophecy. God himself that came to save man. The high priest of the church. The one in whom the church is built, the chief corner stone. So in other words, when Jesus said, and upon this rock I will build my church, you rock Leon was himself. <coughs> Jesus is the rock, is the Messiah. The statement that says, Ikaw ang tagapagintas, you are the Messiah, was the, the foundation of the church. Pastor, okay, fine. Thank you for the exegesis. But what does that mean to the church? 
Who is Mr. Peter Church though? No. Oh, she came to see Peter. It's not Peter. I don't always, always do that. Oh, I see. So, if it's not Peter, it's Jesus. Okay, Pastor. So what? I don't see significance that in my church. What's the significance there? The significance of that is to understand that the church was built on Jesus, the rock, the Messiah, Bakken, without a Savior and the Messiah. Our church is just religion full of rules. Huh? Without Jesus and the foundation of who Jesus is, the Katapalitas, our symbol is just a church full of rules. That's why you have churches who pay more importance on rules. May mga church, mas mahalaga ang rules. Anong sort mo? Anong binabasa mo? Anong music mo? Anong binagawa mo? Anong ganito? Anong ganito? I understand rules, okay? I, I get that. But it should not be the problem. There are churches whose rules are there are no rules. You can do what you want. Ashamedly to say, I've been to some events where there are pastors and there's drinking and the pastor's drinking. And the pastor says, it's okay because he says, do not be drunk with wine. Give me a break. Let's not have that discussion about being drunk with wine. Because when I understand with being drunk is when you're drunk, you're drunk. So you can't go in there, oh, one more drink and I'm going to be drunk. Let's just not. You know, we can have that discussion on any other day. But my thing is, in today's time, people make an excuse from the Bible to do what they want. Not really because God said. I've heard pastors and people preach about why the, the, the King James is the only inspired version. Come on. It was written in 1611, long before Jesus came. I've had, church, I've had churches who come in, and you can't come in unless you have socks. I'm not kidding. It's a Philippine sir. Eh, lahat na kapay, just ka kasi banal. Eh, kung may medyas ka pa, mabaho na mabaho. Kung may medyas ka, hindi ka naman kiyo doon, may patokan eh. Hindi mo mas hindi banal yun? Ako yung bayabas ka, karayola ka? Bago na hindi ko ka, hindi ka naman toothbrush. You smell heavily in your body, but your body is from the gates of hell. I'm serious. God forbid that we have someone who's not dressed enough, clothed enough to come into church and we don't sit with them because they don't look alike or, or smell alike. The reality is he does. I've had people come up to me and say, Pastor, you look too casual when you preach. You should be more formal. I said, you can't be more pastor. I hate to think that you would Listen to what I said because I'm wearing a coat and tie and a hoosie. Although I like those, but I still wear them every day. That's the problem with the church today. You see, a church without preaching Jesus as the rule of the authority without grace is just religion. It's like entering a club. Or civic organization. You, you, know, you want to go to Rotary Club, there's qualifications. Lions Club, qualifications. Tiger Club, Elephant Club, Night Club, there's qualifications. You walk in, you have to do this or do that, do this or do that. I understand modesty, as I said, but that, that ought not to be a basis of whether you should be able to come to church or not. I remember vividly with my father. I was there when that happened many, 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 many years ago. We had a lady every Sunday morning. She will come to church. This is back in the This is in the 70s. She would come to church and she would sit all the way near the middle of the front. But she would always come in during preaching time. But you understand, in the old days, the preaching was at the end of the, of the service, not the beginning like today. Sa dulo, 
So in other words, when you came in late in back in the day, you missed basically the entire service, okay? But she would come in the middle of the preacher, she would sit about right there, about four rows from the pulpit, and everybody was like catching their attention. And she would sit and she would be, Palikot, Palikot, this person, Palikot is always moving around, always moving around. And one day, she saw my dad kind of getting a little irritated because she was, she was new at church. Plus, the Bible came up to my dad and said, Pastor, I want to say, I want to apologize. And my father's like, back in I was, I was, I think maybe nine years old. I will remember, and I will tell you why I remember, okay? Just a few moments. And said, Pastor, pasensya lang po, pagbalik mo tako. And I come in late. Oh, why? It's okay, it's okay. When I go to the pastor, I see that you're bothered when I come in late. And I'm moving too much in my chair. And, and my father says, Okay, well, Father, how can I help you? I'm sorry, Pastor, because my husband is not a believer. And so before I can come to church, he makes me wash clothes all night long, takes clothes from my neighbors, and makes me wash clothes so I can go to church the next morning. Kung mag church ka, maglaba ka ng damit para sa maraming tao. And then sometimes when he's drunk and not happy, he would hit me with a belt. And start hitting me with a belt from my back as I'm washing the clothes. Hey, Pastor, I'm moving around so much. I see, you look at my back, and, and I was a nine year old, eight or nine year old, and I saw her back. Just black and blue. They want to that from there. So, Pastor, I'm sorry when I'm like that. When I'm, because I don't need to be like that. She wanted to apologize. And I saw my father cry. You know? Sometimes, the church is supposed to be the love of God, the representation, the ambassador and representative of Christ to the world. The rule and authority is the word of God, the Bible, not social norms or political opinions. Choose to be biblical rather than acceptable can just be cold and hurtful. Mas marami pa ang nakita ang brutal ng mga Christiana ng mga atheist. Christians did not atheist. I have more atheist friends. I'm telling you. And those people are nice. But I've seen Christians violate each other. I've seen Christians judge each other. I've seen Christians speak hurtfully against each other. I've seen Christian parents who abuse their children. I've seen Christian husbands and wives speak evil among each other, speak evil to each other, hurt each other. I've seen Christians compromise what the Bible says because it is politically correct and acceptable in society. I've seen Christians in churches be quiet about the evils of society because they're afraid they might lose membership. And you call that the church that Jesus built. That's not the church I remember from the Bible. I'm all about love and loving each other. But I'm also all about right and wrong. What is biblical? What is not? Where does love come and mercy take over? Sometimes we're so obsessed with being right, we forget to be merciful. I know that. Because I'm a guy who follows rules when it's right. You know, I call her out of the box. You already know that as a pastor. And I'm not a traditional pastor. You know, um, the pastor staff, they're all my friends. They're not my staff. They're my friends. If you work with me in some areas of the church here, you work with me, not for me. I'm your friend. I will sit with you, have coffee with you, we will chat, we will laugh, we will talk about the stupidest things. But I also know when it's right and when it's wrong. Sometimes we're spreading in church about its rules, about what it will say, and what it will do, and what we should be doing. I've always said it before, and I'm going to say it again. The church should be the first to love, the first to correct, the first to restore, and the first to love, all at the same time. <coughs> Back at pastor, because by them and by those, the world will know that we are his disciples. The church, the rock, chooses to be biblical and acceptable. Pastor, okay, salamat.
What does that mean for me? What does that mean for me, Pastor? What does that mean for IBC? That means the church was customized to reach the world and designed to be after Jesus. Thus, it must live and breathe after Him. The second thing is this that Jesus is Christos, the Messiah. Then, can I ask you today, would you let be Jesus be that Messiah for you and that religion? Do you remember a time in your life when you said to Jesus, Jesus, I will mess up my life if you don't help me. Please save me from my sins and be my Messiah today. Ibig sabihin, minsan sa buhay mo, naiintindihan mo na si Jesus pala dumating, hindi para matay ng relihiyon, kundi para iligtas ka sa kasalanan ng mahal na mahal kanya. At dahil doon meron kong naalala ng tayo na siya mo, Jesus, Iligtas po po ako sa kasalanan ba? I want to know you as my son. And so my question this morning is that if you are here this morning, have you allowed Jesus to be who he is and who he wants to be in your life? He doesn't want to be Santa Claus to you. Study the Bible. He doesn't want to be any other thing to you but to be Savior to you. Have you allowed Jesus to save you? Or are you just here practicing religion? That also means that if you're going through a storm, it says that He is the rock. Would you let Him be that rock for you? The Bible calls Jesus the cornerstone. A cornerstone is an old concept of building. In this church, it's a pretty old building. It has a cornerstone. Did you know that? The cornerstone, no. It's there, on the corner there. When you enter the gate, it's on the left. Then posted on, there's a cornerstone just before the steps. That's the cornerstone. The cornerstone decides, decides the angles of the building. Then you notice, because our lock looks like triangular, it's really not. You see, this thing is shorter, and this one is longer. Kasi kanin yung porma ng lupa. When they used to build, they would choose a cornerstone and they would build everything on the cornerstone. So yung angle ng cornerstone yung dictates the way this whole thing will be lined all the way here and lined all the way across. That's the way a cornerstone works back in the old day. That's why the Egyptian pyramids are perfect in all angles because the isosceles is a perfect architecture an engineer is perfect on all sides. That means the cornerstone of it when it was built was also perfect. That means if you're going through a hard time today, that means if you come to church today, and maybe you're the only person in your home, maybe you're like that lady that you know would make in the home before you go to church. Maybe you came to church and your heart is heavy today. Maybe you come to church and your heart today. Maybe you came to church and you're disappointed today. Maybe you came to church and somebody cheated you or hurt you or, or physically abused you or took advantage of you. Maybe you come to church and, and everything's not okay. You smile and you worship, but in reality it hits you in your heart and things are not okay. And you pray to God when it will be done. Nagmamakaawa ka sa Panginoon. God, kailan mo natapos ito? Maybe mag-isa ka kristyano sa bahay and ikaw lang naninindigan para sa Panginoon. Kawawa ka sa lahat ng tao. Maybe people think that that it should be in the Panginoon. And things are not what I ask you today. Allow Jesus to be who He is in your life, to be the cornerstone of your life and make things aligned with Him today. If you have fightings, in your home, if the marriage is not okay, if the children is wayward, if something's not going right, and there's a conflict, can I ask you to take the word of God, Jesus, and measure everything against it? I promise you, walang conflict, walang away-away, 
na hindi ba itatama pag sinulpo ang sinasabi ng Biblia? I don't care who's right and who's wrong. No conflict in the home, no conflict in the marriage, no conflict in business will not be fixed if it is aligned with the cornerstone of who Jesus is. It just takes humility in truth. And acceptance of who Jesus is. And just say, God, today, huh? if your life is a mess today, kaduloy yung buhay mo, wasak ko sa kabuhay mo, I'll tell you the reason why. It's not because God hates you, the world hates you, but maybe, just maybe, you started your living, your living your life away from the cornerstone of the design of God for you. Kasi sabi ng Bible, hindi siya nag-author ng confusion. So, ibig sabihin, may nag-disalign sa buhay mo. Come back to the cornerstone and get right in Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We praise you, we, we thank you because you have customized the way you talk to us. You have customized us according to your word. You have customized us Lord, to respond to others, to respond to society, to respond to our families, to respond in our everyday life, Lord, according to you. Just the way you build the church, the church partner should live according to you. Lord, you also said this is the way we ought to live according to ourselves and based on your word. So God today, ipakita mo po sa amin, God, that we are lost without you. Maybe there's a person here today and, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Maybe that day about today, wala kang nakalala ng time sa buhay mo na tinanggap mo si Jesus Christ sa puso mo bilang nakapagligas. Today would be the awesome time that you would say to God, God, Lord, please change my life. Lord, kung naging Messiah ka sa buhay na ito, if you came to be my Savior and my Messiah, then Lord, today, be my Savior and be my Messiah today. Patawad po, Panginoon, forgive me, Lord, my sin. Patawad po, Panginoon, sa aking kasalanan, sa aking diyan. Lord, today, ikas mo ako sa aking mga kasalanan. And be my Savior, Lord, today. Let Him be that. Or maybe you've just been going to church. And this message today, you realize that you customized me specifically allow me to be a part of this body of Christ. And I'm not doing really anything in this church or outside of the church. God, today, let me align myself with you. Let me align my purpose. May ako mo ma-align yung purpose ng buhay mo, Panginoon, sa'yo. May ako, Panginoon, na may hindi yan, but if you customize me, that no one can reach my family better than me. No one can impact my home more than me. No one can impact my child more than me. We should place the Lord where I am. Father, teach us to be that kind of people. Teach IBC, Lord, to be a church that is loving, compassionate, after righteousness, full of mercy, All balanced after you and tempered by your love, functioning for you. Kung pabayaan, Panginoon, that we become a church full of people who just come to church. That's not desire. Kung pabayaan, the IBC becomes a people na basta pa lang sisimba lang. Minsan, minsan, ganito. But Lord, help us to live out our lives as members of your church, your ecclesia, Panginoon, in this church, in our homes, in our jobs, in our businesses, in our schools, in our society. Turo mo kami malindigan, Panginoon, sa tama, tumulang sa mali, magmahal sa dapat pangalim, lumayo sa mga hindi dapat samahan, all under your name. 
the name of the Lord. God, please teach us. We pray for that church to happen in this church. In all of our churches. And Father, in this we pray. 